everyone. Welcome to the Yarn and You Girl podcast. I'm Janine, your host, also known as Yarn and You Girl. And if you want to find me on the internet, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Yarn and You and on Ravelry as Yarn and You Girl. That's E W E, not Y O U. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. This is where I kind of come and talk about all the crafty things I'm getting into, mostly knitting. So I hope that that is what you're here for, and I hope that you'll enjoy today's episode. Today is August 3rd. It has been maybe three and a half weeks since I've last recorded. I don't remember what episode this is, maybe episode 55. Uh, so a lot has been going on, and I went on vacation and, and did all that stuff, so I will go into what's been happening in my little world over here in the Pacific Northwest. But um, I did want to say thank you to all the viewers out there who shared their concern for my dog, Tonks. He's doing much better now. He is still on antibiotics for his um, aspiration pneumonia, but we really only have about one more week left, I think, and then he should be good. So, And his energy is starting to come back, and, and he's starting to act like his old self again. So thank you so much, everyone, for just showing your support. I appreciated that a lot. It was kind of a rough little time that we had, so I did um, truly uh, want to thank you guys. Uh, it made me feel pretty good having, just knowing that there were people out there who wanted, you know, to let me know that they supported me and, you know, all that good stuff. So, uh, let's see. I, as per usual, don't have show notes because I'm kind of a last minute gal. I was planning on podcasting today, but I had to get up super early for a doctor's appointment. And then I took a nap because I had gone to bed pretty late last night and my eyes have been bothering me quite a bit, which is why I'm wearing the glasses today. I don't usually wear my glasses, but I, they've been, my contacts haven't been sitting well on my eye. And so I've had a couple appointments with my eye doctor. We're trying to find some contacts that will work. Uh, I have a, a bit of astigmatism in both eyes and my corneas are kind of flat. So a lot of the contacts don't connect well with my, the shape of my eye. So yeah, and I'm pretty much can't see without glasses or contacts. I, it's very fuzzy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not good. And I, it's kind of weird because I used to, you know, I've never in my whole like childhood and up into college, I didn't ever need to wear glasses or contacts. And then all of a sudden my vision just started going. So yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of glasses because I'm not used to them sitting on my face. And sometimes the pressure of them sitting on my face can give me a little bit of a headache or if it's um, just heavy right here. It does that for me with headbands and um, earphones and I can get headaches pretty easily. But I have been actually working my way, like wearing these more frequently so that knowing, you know, knowing that my contacts aren't working really well, I do need to see. So I, I do like this pair of glasses. It's not super heavy. And um, I've been gradually kind of working my stamina up, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, where I can wear them for a longer period of time and not have, you know, issues. So anyway, that's not what you guys came here to learn about. But I did want to just mention, because I know I never wear glasses on the podcast, so you guys are probably all wondering, you know, what's going on? Does she have some kind of goofy eye infection or something? No, it's just allergies and then the contact's not sitting well, so glasses today for you all. Um, so I have only one finished object, but I have a lot of works in progress. I feel, I feel like, I feel like I can't finish anything though. And so I'm glad that I at least finished one, but everything is like a little bit here, a little bit there. I've stalled on a couple things because they need to have a provisional cast on. And I just didn't feel like doing a provisional cast on and like, you know, some of the other stuff, but that's okay because that's sometimes what happens, and it's been hot, and I've just not been feeling as much of the mojo lately, so I'm trying to get back into it, and I did cast on some new things, so hopefully that will kind of help, like, you know, stir the knitting juices, and I bought some new patterns and things like that, so yeah, I'm hoping for some inspiration as well. 
Um, I did want to say that my Hepzibah Light Shawl, which is the green one over there, I'll actually go get it really fast so I can show you guys again what it looks like. And um, it's gonna, the pattern's gonna be releasing very soon. All my test knitters are finished and they have kind of done, you know, giving me all the feedback. I've got pictures taken and everything. So that's gonna be coming, I think, in the pipeline this, this next week. So be on the lookout on my Instagram for when that releases because there will be some kind of coupon code for viewers or um, Instagram followers where you can get a certain percentage off the pattern when you first um, purchase it within like the first week or something. So let me just quickly grab that shawl so I can show you again what it's like and then we'll get back to things. Okay, so my Hepzibah, my original Hepzibah was a worsted weight version of this. This is my light version of this. So it uses a fingering weight yarn. It's a sampler-ish where you've got different sections, sections with baubles, sections with different styles of lace, and sections with garter. And it's a nice um, asymmetrical triangle. I'm gonna kinda come back here so you guys can see. Um, it's just slightly asymmetrical, so you don't have that weird long tail. You do get some pretty decent um, tails, you know, nothing too obnoxious where it's hard to style. I know I've been hearing when I've been watching other people's podcasts that, oh, excuse me, scoot, 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 that people are having quite a bit of trouble or... They're liking the look of shawls, but then when they go to wear them, if they especially if they have that really long tail, they're finding that it's quite um, difficult to wear. And I do agree with that. I know I like some of these. Some of the shawls are beautiful, but I have a really hard time with some of the ones with long tails because I'm not sure how to wear them or I always feel like I'm fussing with them. So I do like this one quite a bit for that, uh, for the reason that it's slightly asymmetrical and not major asymmetrical. So... That should be coming out this upcoming week. I'm just fiddling with the pattern, a couple more little edits and some, you know, pictures put in there and stuff, and then I'll be loading it into Ravelry. So again, keep a lookout on my Instagram account and um, and the Ravelry store for that. Okay. So that's that. That's not obviously a now finished object. That was a finished object for me a while back. But I did want to make sure you guys all knew about that. Um, my now finished object, the only one I have done, is my uh, plain vanilla socks today, guys. This is all I got. It's um, And I cannot find my sock blockers anywhere. And I scoured this room. <laughs> And I know they're in plain sight because I just actually, like, I make stitch markers too. And I had a bunch that were made up so when I got orders, I could just, like, stick them in the bag and then it'd be all good to go. Well, I ran out of the ones that were pre-done and I was looking everywhere, everywhere for my little case that has all my beads and, you know, little things for making the stitch markers. And um, I just now found them today. And it's just because they were kind of hiding under something. And I know I've seen the sock blockers around this room somewhere. <laughs> and Yeah, I don't know. So we're just going to, you know, wing it with plain old vanilla socks. Now, these are mustache yarn, the must match in the apple picking colorway. I watched, um, oh... Gracelyn Wool has a podcast, and I watched her, uh, and she um, was doing some socks with this yarn, and I was like, oh, man, I want to, I want to, I want socks like that, so I actually bought the yarn on a D-stash on Ravelry. I was able to find it, so that is always such a great place to go because I did just get some more yarn. Well, I haven't got it. I bought some more yarn. I'm hoping that it, it will get sent to me soon. Um, but it is a good place to go for de for people who like discontinued colors, people who may have bought the yarn, but it's been sitting in their stash for a long time and they're just not feeling it anymore. Uh, such a great place to find the yarn that you might be looking for. And usually it's at a little bit of a discount. So I would highly recommend checking that out. It's kind of a little bit tricky to get to it in, in Ravelry. You have to go to the yarn tab and then you have to search the specific yarn you're looking for or a brand. 
and then you know kind of go into that and then you have to do an advanced search for will sell or trade and then you can kind of look and there's a bunch of you know different colorways listed and then you contact those people via Ravelry and take care of it that way you may already know all this information but I was very excited to figure it out myself so I thought I better share that with you guys so anyway I just used I cast on 64 stitches but this was on a US zero so a two millimeter needle they are a bit tight I'm hoping that they're not too tight I haven't worn them but I have blocked them well I've soaked them I haven't obviously blocked them because I can't find my sock blockers but I um, I'm hoping that they work I used uh, the heel from Hermione's everyday socks uh, by Erica Luter and I really like this one because it's it's like I have partridge and it has like this garter edge and I like the way that you pick up the stitches on the sides um, she does it she did a video actually because the first time I did these Hermione's everyday socks I didn't really know how I was supposed to pick up the stitches on the side and she did a video on her Instagram just like a quick you know whatever 30 second video that they allow you to do on your Instagram page where it showed you how to pick up the stitches on the side and that was brilliant so once I figured out how to do that I thought that that was great because a lot of times you'll just you know slip the edge stitch for most heel flap and gussets but this one has that um, just a little bit of a garter ridge and then the way you do it is you end up going into like one of the garter bumps and pick up the stitches but from the garter bump and then you don't have any like loose stitches you don't need to twist your stitch to make sure it's tight around that heel flap so it was really um really ingenious so if you want to check that out i would check out erica luter's um instagram page i think it's just erica dream dreams in color or dream yeah i can't remember dream in color i think is hers i'm not sure i'll see if i can figure it out and i'll put it on the um screen here but anyway, very cool little video, um, kind of if you like that heel. So that's what I did for these. And I don't keep track of my rows. I know a lot of people have like a vanilla sock formula. I've been using my foot cut out a lot of times for the Fish Lips Kiss heel, but I did not for this one. I just tried it on as I went. And then the second sock, I literally like just matched up as best I could with the stripes and then when I started to get to this second set of stripes here that's when I started decreasing the toe um, and I think they turned out you know fairly similar maybe they're off a row but it, you wouldn't even notice I think that they're they're not too bad at all actually and the color like really they lined up quite well so I was quite happy with that um, if you want perfectly matched hand dyed sock yarn um, mustache yarn that's awesome she did a great job with these uh, so very cool I um, am excited about these socks if they don't fit if they're too narrow or too tight which I don't think it'll be too much of a problem but if they are too tight my sister always has um, she has narrower feet than I do and she loved this yarn she wanted me to make her a pair of socks anyway so if they don't work out they're gonna go to her as a gift um, if they end up being too tight that's my only finished object I do have some works in progress I have um, a couple that you've seen before and like I said a couple new ones so let me kind of show you where I am with some of the stuff that you've seen and then we'll move on to some of the new stuff so I did do a little bit on my that 70s tee uh, we are doing a knit along for that it actually ends at the end of this month so I need to kind of get cracking but it's not just the that 70s tee that you have to knit you can knit a um, summer garment of any style, like a tank top or a lightweight um, linen, cotton blend yarn, something that you would wear in warmer weather. And you can enter that in to win. Um, it's on the Ravelry group page, which is the Yarn and You Girl podcast. And um, yeah, there's a chatter thread and a finished objects thread. I haven't checked it out recently because I've been out of town and not really paying attention to my Ravelry that well, but there were quite a few finished objects in there. And if you do knit the That 70s tee, then you get to enter twice. And I have, for prizes, I have a sock blank, I have a little notions pouch, I have some tea, 
couple other things, I think. So yeah, definitely. If you're knitting a summer garment, if you did it any time from, you know, the be basically the beginning of June, I think is when we started somewhere around there to the end of August. And it could be a whip, you know, that you just finished or whatever. I'm, I'm pretty lenient with stuff like that. I don't really, it doesn't bother me too bad. Um, right now I'm not that I don't get as many entries as some of the other podcasts. So the more entries, the better. I just want people to participate. So I think that that's great. Um, so go over and if you're doing a summer garment and check that out. But I I know I've shown you guys this quite a bit, but I did put a progress marker, at least from where I was, so I could kind of keep track. And it's honestly, I did like another inch. I told you guys when I was going to go to Hawaii that I would just probably be knitting on this. And that didn't happen. I started some new projects, but it's growing, you know, it's an extra inch longer. So it's, I'm being slow with it and that's okay, but I do want to try to finish it in time for the cow because um, it'll be perfect for the fall. It's um, short sleeve, uh, lightweight. It's still a little, it's a little bit hot right here, but it's a t-shirt, so it would count for the knit along. Um, the yarn is O-Loops. This one is the main body color and it's through the trap door. It's on her fashion, the fashion knot base, which is 75 Superwash Marina, 20 nylon, and 5 gold Stellina. And then the light blue is Spring Skies, I believe. And that's also on the fashion knot base. So that's that uh, one. So not a ton of progress on it. But I am slowly working on it, and it's probably boring to see, like, you know, oh, she only did an inch of stockinette. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but that's what I did. Um, the other sweater that I'm working on right now, I showed you guys the start of it. Um, it's um, housed in my uh, single strand studio bag, oh, Constellations bag, which I really like this bag. I talked about it last episode. Um, it was a nice gift from the ladies over at Single Strand Studio. I am making the Laden tea. Let me show you the picture again. Let's see if I can find it in here. Of course, it's in Pom Pom Quarterly Summer um, Summer Magazine. And it's this one. I am doing it in Elizabeth Lavold Hempathy. So it's a hemp cotton modal blend. So 34% hemp, 41% uh, cotton, and 25% modal. Um, this is the Paris green colorway. I really love this color. I think it will, it will look really nice on me. And then the accent color for the stripes is Snow Leopard, I believe. And it's just this light gray. Again, Hempathy. Uh, these come in 50 gram balls. They're very reasonably priced. Um, so the sweater is not going to cost me an arm and a leg, which is great. I did the whole front panel and the two sides. So the front panel, let me get to that because I've got my needles on the side. So this is going to be kind of tricky. So this is the front panel of the sweater. It goes like this. So, and then um, you, you've done, you do this front center piece first and then you start picking up stitches along the edge and knitting outward. And now that I've knit outward, I'm at this point where I need to put all these stitches on waist yarn and then um, provisionally cast on to start doing the next section. And I've just been lazy and haven't provisionally cast on. So I haven't really done anything and I, so this side is right, the side with my needles on it. This side that I already put on waist yarn is actually missing one repeat of this blue section, just this side section over here. I need to do one more increased row, basically, back and forth, and then it will be the same. So obviously I already you know, broke the yarn on this side, so I'm gonna have to add the yarn in and do it again, and I've just been kinda like, mm. I just need, I stalled on it quite a bit. So I do need to pick it back up. I really, really like this sweater and I'm excited, you know, that to be working on it, but I, it's just stalled out a bit. But that's okay because the front panel's done. The rest of it should be just plain stockinette. 
for the most part. Um, and it's short sleeve, so it's not, I, I think I've made a significant chunk. Uh, last time you guys saw it, it was literally like just this section here. And I was really confused as to how it came together, how this front piece looked the way that it did. But it turned out, I think it turned out great. So, and I really, really like the feel of this fabric. So I have to do that still on this. I have to add that extra repeat, put my needles back on that one side, and you know start getting to work on that. And that is from Pom Pom Quarterly's summer issue. I did just see their um, fall issue, and the cover looks really cool. It's like this moon, stars, constellation, color work sweater. It looked awesome, and everybody's been kind of raving about it on Instagram. Uh, very, very cute. I can't wait to see what else is in that uh, magazine. I did order a year subscription of Pom Pom Quarterly. So, um, yeah, that should be coming. I think the release is August 20th. Like, they start going out in the mail on August 20th. and But you can do pre-orders now if you just want the fall Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. So let me put that back in there and move on to my next work in progress. And I have an itchy nose. Uh, let's see. So those two, two down, two down. Um, the next two things are socks. So let me go into those a little bit. Oh, gosh, I've got like a, a hair in my nose, tickly. I jumped on and started knitting the... Stitch Surfer socks. I've been watching the Naughty Knitwits, and Michelle is do has been doing some Stitch Surfers, and so um, that's just sounded really cool to me. So I bought some self striping yarn from Two Sisters Yarn Co. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the colorway because I can't at the moment, and I left my. T oh wait, maybe it's in here. Maybe the tag's in here. No, of course it's not in here, because you know. But this is the um, self-striping. It's all caked up. And it's got these orange and um, pink and navy and teal kind of gr and gray striping. And then I paired it with some purple I had for from, it was Lorna's Laces, Shepherd Sock. I was doing Moody's stockings with it and I was bored with that so I ripped it out and I paired it with this and I thought this actually looked really great it's a it's not the same at all but it has a nice contrast so you start at the toe it's a free pattern um nitty nitty.com free pattern but you can find it on Ravelry and the link to the pattern there I, there's a couple different versions for size. I am doing these on US size one, and I cast on the 60 stitches. Uh, they're a bit snug, but not like too snug. I'm thinking they'll be okay. I might have done, I think they had an option for like 68 or 64, and then like 72 or something like that. So if I do another pair, I might go up depending on how these turn out. But, um, yeah, once you got started, it was really fun and quite intuitive. And um, you just have to be careful on the back side because this side on your sole is where um, you can you can get into a little bit of trouble. So it's a combination, how it knits together. You have a little bit of intarsia here where you're crossing your yarn to kind of lock the stitches in place so you don't end up with big holes. And then the back side, on one row, you're doing a wrap and turn, and on the other row, you're just slipping it. So the wrap and turn kind of holds it, helps to hold it in place on the sole side. Well, at one point, I dropped that stitch, and the wrap dropped that was holding it in place, and it basically unzipped like a zipper. So you do have to be quite careful on this side if you lose a stitch at your seam, it will come undone. So be aware of that. The heel is, um, I ended up doing, I started doing the heel that they called for and it was weird, I thought. I couldn't, it wanted you to only, I don't know, it felt like it was short. So I actually just ended up doing a fish lips kiss heel, except when you came around normally with a fish lips kiss heel, I didn't end up with um, holes, but I think because 
you end up doing like a row before you get started of the single color. I ended up getting some holes on each side of the seam here. So what I did was um, I knit back to that row where I started to go back into the round again. And then at each of the corners, I just picked up a stitch in the corner. And then on the next round, I decreased that stitch out on each side. So it actually gave it like a nice, you know, tight, no hole thing on both sides. So that was actually, um, that's a little tip I would give if you were using the Fish Lips Kiss. Uh, it was a little tricky. Um, like I said, getting the toe started was a bit tricky. But once you got it started, yeah, it's super fun. So I'm on the, on the leg. I am probably going to go, you know, maybe one full color repeat on the, you know, from blue to this dark you know, again, I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe more. Maybe up to the, you know, orange again. I don't know how long it'll be. But, um, yeah, it fits my foot. It's it's really fun. Gosh, my poor nose. Super itchy. Uh, but, yeah, so if you're looking for a fun, different sock pattern, it's just, it is vanilla, basically, except, you know, you're purling some one row and you're knitting one row. So you do have to do some purling in this. So if you don't like that, then you might not like this, but it is enough to keep my interest. Sometimes vanilla socks do bore me, which is why they take a little bit longer. So I am just doing one at a time. I considered doing two at a time, but I thought that would be way too much yarn management on the needles here. So just one at a time. And again, this is Two Sisters Yarn Co. And I will put the name of the colorway here in the show notes and down on the, um, down below. That way, if you're interested, um, she's on, they're on Etsy and the shipping was really quick and the yarn is super nice. So, and the color, um, stripe variations are great. So if you're interested in that too, she had, so they had some really good colors. That is... My Stitch Surfer sock. Then um, on the plane ride to Hawaii, so we did recently go to Hawaii. We only went for about five days, which was actually fine. I was kind of lamenting the fact that it was only going to be five days, but it was starting to, like, you know, feel a bit heavy. <laughs> you know, you're there for a long time. It's very humid there, and all of us um, retained a bit of water. Like, our legs were a bit swollen, and I don't know if that's just because we're getting old or we were drinking too much alcohol or something, but we all felt like we had like huge, you know, cankles or whatever you want to call it. Like our feet were all, like our toes were puffy and our feet and our ankles were all puffy and a little uncomfortable. Um, it was quite warm. The house we stayed in only had air conditioning in the bedrooms and it was like a window unit and they were asking us to try not to use the air conditioning as much as possible because obviously it's expensive. So we did, though, use the air conditioning in the bedrooms because there was no way you could sleep. What was really nice, though, is the house actually was had a swimming pool in the front. Um, it was right off the main highway in Oahu um, on, like, the south side of Oahu. But it had, it was, the property was set far enough back that you didn't really hear the road and it was a gated um like private gated yard and then there was a swimming pool and then in the back of the house there was a nice size yard and then the ocean was like right there it was at high tide there was no beach though the the ocean literally came up to the yard or the coconut tree line because <laughs> there were quite a few coconut trees um, but at low tide, there was maybe about, you know, 12 feet of beach. The area where we were, though, it was pretty shallow for about a quarter of a mile out um, into the ocean. So you could really maybe no more than two, two and a half feet. You could literally walk about a quarter of a mile out. We saw quite a few people out there actually on various mornings fishing. They would be in the, you know, look like they're in the middle of the ocean, but they're really only standing in like two and a half feet deep water. We did play in the in the ocean a bit there. It was very, with all the lava rock and everything, it was quite uh, treacherous to your feet. So it was better if you had shoes on 
or, and most of us, you know, just laid on floaties in there and like, you know, hung out. And in the afternoon though, the wind would really pick up on that side of the ocean and the waves would be, even though it's only two feet deep, you're really like being blown around quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was a lot of fun. The front of the house had a mango tree and we had fresh mangoes every day, which was amazing. And then, you know, coconut fell one day. And so the kids were like cracking open the coconut and we cut it out. You know, once they like cracked it open, we were able to like cut it and, like, you know, pour all the coconut water out. And they thought that was pretty cool. I don't think they really liked it. But they did think it was pretty cool that they could just, you know, pick up this coconut and crack it open and drink some stuff out of it. Uh, we went to the North Shore one day and hung out at uh, a beach that was a little more conducive to swimming, uh, a little bit sandier, uh, very, very warm that day. But we did play in the ocean for quite a bit. It's very salty, salty water there if you haven't been to Hawaii, um, but warm definitely warmer than the Pacific Northwest in in the Pacific Ocean where I'm from. So that was nice. It's, it was pleasant to, you know, hang out in the ocean and swim and, you know, do all those things. And then we went and we got some shave ice, which I guess is really big in Hawaii and super good. And there was um, Matsum Matsumoto's or something on Oahu in the North Shore is like the supposedly been rated on Yelp like the best shave ice ever and there was a line probably 50 feet if you know 50 people deep or whatever and so we waited because we wanted to try this best shave ice ever and it was really good but they had different options so you could get like an ice cream scoop on the bottom and then they pack the ice on top and then they'd pour all your like syrups and stuff. And then you could even get sweetened condensed milk like drizzled on top of that. And um, you could get some weird beans that I'd never heard of before and mochi balls. And these mochi balls, we didn't know what they were. We looked them up on the internet and they said they were supposed to be ice cream filled like things, candies from Japan. Okay, that sounds cool. Ice cream in the middle, mochi ball, great. Um, the, well, the ones that they served on the side of the shave ice there were not filled with ice cream. They pretty much, I didn't like them at all. <laughs> I ate one of them and my kids each tried one, but it was like they didn't have any flavor and they were just kind of chewy. And I think if they had the ice cream in the middle, they would have probably been better because that's kind of what we were expecting. Um, my nephew actually tried one and, and threw up. <laughs> Matt, my husband, he's like, he bet Lily, my niece, to eat one. He said, you if you want, I'll give you a dollar if you eat one. And, you know, but you have to swallow it and then I'll give you a dollar. So she ate one and she swallowed it. She didn't really like it all that much, but she ate one. And so Evan, the younger one, want, wants to earn a dollar too. So Matt's like, okay, well, you have to swallow it. <laughs> Well, he gets like, I guess I was at the bathroom this whole time. So I didn't, I was hearing like secondhand. He gets like halfway through it. And then he's like, you know, gets this like look on his face and then just barfs. Like his mom's like, spit it out, spit it out. And then he just like barfed all in her hand. It was really bad. And, and then Matt, the meanie, he's like, well, you don't get a dollar. You didn't swallow it. <laughs> And it was like, are you kidding? So Dylan, my youngest, actually gave him the dollar because Matt was like, well, he didn't swallow it. It's the principal. And I was like, dude, you made him throw up. Give the kid a freaking dollar. Like, what the heck? Oh, but it's so funny. I felt really bad for Evan because he's kind of sensitive anyway. And oh, my gosh, we I, we were all kind of laughing, though. And, and it was pretty bad. But I just couldn't believe Matt. He was like, well, I'm not going to give him the dollar. <laughs> What a butthead. <laughs> anyway, that's not what I was talking about at all. I was going to tell you about my knitting project that I started on the plane, but um, I got into my Hawaii trip. We did have so much fun, though, and just my niece, we flew my niece out. We were supposed to use her as our babysitter for the kids, 
But literally, like, I think we used her one night for where the six of us adults went out to dinner, and she stayed home with the kids, and the rest of the time she just went everywhere with us, and, you know, she's 23, so she was playing games with us and drinking with us and, and doing all that stuff. So it was really fun, fun time. Good to see all the family and have that, like, good quality time. So it's my sister, my twin, and then my younger brother, Jared, and their significant others or and my, you know, kids and stuff involved. So lots and lots of fun. My kids were in the swimming pool, like, all day long at, you know, 7 in the morning. They're like, can we go in the pool? Can we go in the pool? And it was a little, like, Okay, sure, <laughs> whatever, 7 in the morning, knock yourself out. But anyway, um, I started a new sock design on the plane. I On the plane ride there, we, the four of us, the way that the seats go these days, you can't really like decide where you want to sit half the time anymore. Um, we checked in a day in advance, but we were flying with United, and they had already assigned our seats. And my husband had said he tried to mix our seats around, but he couldn't. So the three boys were on, it was a three seats and an aisle and three seats and an aisle. So the three boys were on the one side and then the other seat was like the window seat. And then, you know, so it was kind of separated by two people. So we didn't want to put any of the kids there by themselves. And Matt wanted the aisle because he's big and long and he wanted more leg room and so I was like well I'll take the window I don't really care who I was just gonna knit the whole time anyway and not talk to anybody so I sat in the window seat well the guy who was sharing the the there was one guy who came in and he had the aisle seat or no he had the middle seat and so he and I are sitting there nobody's sitting in the aisle seat and he and I are sitting kind of next to each other and you know those seats are kind of like real tight you know so you're feeling like pretty friendly with your neighbors uh you know we're making small talk it's fine but they're starting to close up the plane and there's nobody coming to sit in that other seat so we're like if nobody takes that seat like this is going to be awesome so i actually switched and gave him the uh, window seat and i sat at the aisle seat so that i could get up if i had to go to the bathroom and didn't have to bother anybody and then i could like talk to matt and and do that so and then we had a seat between us which is great so we didn't have to feel like we were all like cozy and up with strangers uh the seat between us so you could put stuff there it was like the best and then didn't happen quite so much on the way back. But I did meet a really nice lady on the plane who actually like gave me a stitch marker. She was knitting. She saw I was knitting socks. And and as we were leaving, she, she gave me a handmade stitch marker, which was really, really nice. And it was just sweet to know that there, yeah, there are other people, you know, we're all kind of connected. And, and there's that mutual thing that we love that brings us together. So... I started knitting a new pair of socks, a design. I've been wanting, I bought the Cat Sandwich Fibers yarn. I showed you guys a couple um, episodes back. I can't remember. But this one is uh, Unicorn Dreams. And it's a Stellina. And this is the one I didn't think was Stellina because I had bought two skeins at the time. And one of them is like extra sparkly. And one of them like has barely any sparkle. I questioned that it was actually sparkle. Uh, but I, this is the one I picked to try to do it because it was kind of a muted tones. Um, it's like subtle striping, uh, subtle micro striping kind of thing, but you don't even really notice it. And so I thought, well, this would be good for uh, design because you'd be able to really see the design. So I'm trying to get it out here without. So this is the yarn. This one is Unicorn Dreams and it's washing out super bad, but it's like this pale, pale blue and pale, pale, or almost like a pale mint and pale pink. And then it has little speckles of color throughout. Um, and then I just started kind of winging it with a pattern. One that I, I brought my Japanese lace knitting book and I was kind of uh, tossing around some different ideas. And this is what I've got so far. So I don't know if you can see that. So it's got this like wider ribbing up here, twisted ribbing, and then a tighter one by one in the back and no design on the back. But then it's got, you know, um, these sort of like 
knot stitches or wrap stitches. And then this section, um, I'm not sure I'm going to keep this section. I'm still thinking about it because it does, like, because you do some increases here, it makes the sock a little bit wider right here, which I don't think will be too bad for the cuff. Um, I'm actually considering I'm going to change the pattern on the foot. So I'm hoping that this is okay for the cuff, and then the pattern change on the foot will actually be a little bit tighter because you don't want your sock to be too loose. And it does tighten back up again when you start doing these little wrap stitches again. So um, this is kind of what I've got so far. I'm just playing around. That Japanese lace book is so beautiful, and there's so many different things in there that um, I really just wanted to try some of them out. And so I thought, well, why not try them out on a pair of socks? And I thought, you know, if I mix and match a couple different things, that's okay. So it's very, very pale. Like I said, you can't really see the color super well, but um, that is uh, Cat Sandwich Fibers, Unicorn Dreams. It's on her glitzy base, but like I said, this one doesn't have a lot of glitz to it at all. I see, like, I don't know, there's like maybe a sparkle every once in a while, but barely. Um, it's it's hardly noticeable at all, especially compared to the other one. So I don't know if one batch had more sparkle woven into it than another or if it came out in the dyeing process or something. I don't know. Um, but I do like this one a lot, and so I'm, I'm enjoying playing with it. So I basically did this whole cuff here uh, on the plane ride to Hawaii. And I was making notes the whole time too, so it didn't, I, I felt like I got a lot done, but it was also a little bit slower because, you know, I was stopping every row and like writing down what I was doing and, and that always takes a little bit of extra time. But I did like, I do like them a lot. And so that's going to be down the pipeline somewhere, sometime, little sock pattern that I'm working on. The other thing that I'm working on, and I'm super close to being done, but this thing is freaking ginormous, and I need to make another one because obviously, like, this is too big for what I was expecting, but this is my um, Brio shawl design that I've been working on. I don't want to lose the stitches, so I'm going to try to grab it real quick, and it's, it's so big, you guys, but... But I think you guys remember I told you I had, I was only decreasing on one side. And so I started decreasing on both sides and that's gone, gotten it sped up quite a bit. But this is basically how the shawl, oh, I don't want to lose that either. So this is part of it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's so, so big. So you start at the end, basically, and you're working your way down to that last point. But it is it is going to be seriously a giant, whatever they call it, schlanket or whatever, because it's so big and it's so deep, like too deep almost. But I think it's going to be gorgeous when I'm done with it. I'm so excited because, I mean, look at this. Like, even just like this is so, so awesome. I love, 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 love this part of it. Love this part of it. So I cannot wait to be done and just like, it's slow going because I've got stitch markers between each of the little um, syncopated, this is like called syncopated brioche. And so I've got stitch markers between each of the sections. So when I get to the brioche section, it's a little bit slow because I'm Oh, I got to slip a stitch marker and they're not, you know, they kind of get in your way. You can't just go fast, fast, fast. Now I probably wouldn't need to do stitch markers, but I don't want to get lost. But I am very close. Like this is all that's left um, on the garter section. And on this side, I'm decreasing every row. So I'm getting closer and closer to that brioche and then I'll be decreasing the brioche and no longer um, making it. It's humongous, but I love these colors together too. This one though is taken almost four skeins of yarn, so that's kind of a lot, you know. And I don't want people to have to spend that much money to make a shawl, like you know, that's a lot. I mean, sometimes you do, you just do, because the shawl, you know, it's what you want. 
but I want to be accessible to, I want this to be accessible to a lot of different people. So I'm going to um, be, hopefully when I do my next one, if I decrease the entire way, oh, I'm coming back, decrease the entire way on both sides, I will be able to make it, uh, pare it down to be more like two or three skeins of yarn. I am going to do a three color option next time. And I think I've come up with my two color, at least two of the colors. And I think that the trim, oops, sorry, I'm making some noise here. So the trim is done separately. That's this, um, yikes, yikes. Let's see. So that's this part. You do this part first. It's just these leaves and stuff. So I think I'm going to use, I have some left of my Hubba Bubba, this hot pink color that I did my um, sweater, my first, that 70s sweater in. So I have some of that left over. I'm going to do that as the trim, I think. And then I'm going to do, let me grab them. I dyed up this gray, just like a smoky gray. I think it's, I didn't follow one of my gray recipes. I just kind of like threw some gray in there and okay, that looks good. Um, and then I'm going to do bonkers, which is like this hot pinks and orange, black and blue and purple and stuff kind of all over. And I think like that'll make a really nice like subtle gray, white, striping and then pretty on the brioche side too with this being the light and then having that hot pink strip at the bottom I think will look really really cool so that's kind of the plan for the third one or this next one that I do but I'm not like I said I'm hoping that I can make it so that it is only a two or a three skein project it'll probably be more like a three skein project the way it's sort of going but I don't know We'll have to see, um, but that's okay because I like both of those um, and I can dye up more of those. It's kind of why I'm using my own yarn because then if I run out, I'll just dye up another skein. That's what I ended up doing with the purple because I ran out of the hellebore and I had to dye more. Uh, so, and that actually turned out quite well. Like the, the contrast was the same. They weren't too different, even though they were different dye lots. And then you don't notice it's so bad in the brioche garter combination. So that's okay if they're slightly different. Um, but yeah, so that's all of my works in progress. I did um, reach out to my class moms and dads, and we are going to be teaching the kids this year how to do crochet. And they're going to be crocheting granny squares, and I'm going to be putting them together into a big granny square blanket. So I know I've got my own granny square blanket going on, so that might be, you know, it's it's a project. It's it's coming along for sure. I haven't worked on it in a while because I'm kind of waiting. I was waiting for the other color yarn to come back in stock, and it is back in stock. But then it's knit picks, so I didn't want to order just that because then it's you have to pay shipping. And if I ordered fifty dollars worth of stuff, it wouldn't cost me shipping. So now that this project is going with the with the moms and the kids, I will be probably placing a big knit picks order so that um, we can get started and have the yarn ready for the blanket. I um, I think I'm probably going to pick up some of the um, Felici maybe. I'm not sure. I do like how the socks turn out, but I don't know. Some of the new colors, they were okay. There were a couple that were like, wow, that's cute, you know, but I'm not sure. Um, it just seems so hard to pass up. It's such inexpensive yarn for you know, striped socks. So that is that. I did want to also let you know, I have a couple unclaimed prizes. Um, one of them is from my last episode, the single strand studio cast on case. I have it still here and the winner, I'm going to give one more chance to contact me. Let me find the name. Um, her name was Stephanie. She won last time and, uh, her Ravelry ID was ATAS one mom. So if that's you and you're watching this episode, please get in contact with me on Ravelry because this is your last chance. Next episode, if she hasn't contacted me, I'm just going to open it up and pick another winner from that um, drawing because, you know, 
that's only fair. And then I also have some of this Ariosa that I did for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I have two skeins of this that I was giving away as a gift, but one of the winners didn't contact me. So next episode, if I still haven't heard from that person, which at this point I don't even remember who it was, it's, you know, somewhere in one of my episodes a couple couple whiles back. If that person still doesn't contact me, then I'll pull another winner next episode for those two skeins as well from that 1,000 subscriber giveaway thread. So I want to make sure that I don't end up with too many unclaimed projects. Uh, some of them, most of the time they people claim them, but every once in a while, you know, they end up missing, you know, not getting, not getting claimed. Oh, I did do, I was practicing some of the crochet granny squares, and I do have a crochet granny square here, but this is um, one of the ones I was practicing, seeing, you know, if this would be, ba this is pretty basic, basic enough for the kids, right? Um... But I don't know, like I think it's a bit too loose. I was using DK yarn, which I think I will get worsted for the blanket. And I was probably using the wrong hook size for this. But I was just debating whether or not, you know, this would be an easy granny square to do. And I think it is. I'm actually working with my son to help him crochet up one. His center here, this is always the hardest part when you're beginning. Um, it's all wonky, but it's okay practice so I did do that that was a little bit of crochet that I did but that was in anticipation of planning this you know teaching of parents so that I can send the kids home maybe with some parents who are at least aware of what they're doing I'm also going to be putting up a uh, private YouTube video I think for that those families just because the pattern I'm going to be following isn't my own pattern and I don't want to be stepping on anybody's toes by you know doing like hey here's everybody this is how you do this pattern I am picking free patterns but I still don't want to uh, you know infringe on people so I will just do I will be doing a private video link for the families that they can access at home on how to do like the whole granny square, which if it's this one or, or another one um, that I decide to do. So that way, you know, uh, some people are visual learners and if I'm not there to show them, then this works a little bit well for them. So let's see, let's see. I think, guys, I think that's it. That's, I actually went through that kind of quickly. So that's good, right? Like 50 minutes or so. I know, um, try to keep it under an hour, right? <laughs> Thank you again, though, so much for joining me today. And I will see you guys next time. In the meantime, make sure that you stay busy and knit, 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 or crochet, or crochet, or whatever you do. Just be motivated. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.